Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How have you watching, wherever you're watching, how have you listening, wherever you listen? It's the Bet Online Salute to Troy podcast. Salute to Troy is brought to you by Bet Online. Go to betonline.ag and get all your local ups in the minutes, odds, bets, wagers, whatever you want to how lie. If you want to bet, if you don't know what how lie is, you can bet on how lie on Bet Online. Go to betonline.ag. Also, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog, go to the Underdog Fantasy app. Go to underdogfantasy.com. If you want somebody to go over under, put it in Underdog Fantasy. Your ultimate fantasy stop. Madman. I don't. I, I've been thinking of a. Of How a are met- you, Coach? By the way, oh, great. Yeah, to yeah, you. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is. You know what it is. I figured it out. We talk like before, and we catch up before, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. No, it's, oh. it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> Absolutely. Madman, how are you doing today? Doing, I completely well. apologize. Well, great to see you as always. <laughs> this is a fun. This is a fun episode, Coach, because it's going to be kind of a flash in the pan. You know, we went into obviously the Nebraska game in in some detail. I think we'll we'll sort of touch on Maeva as it relates to this topic, and then a whole host of things to to break down at LA Football Network. The worlds are colliding tomorrow night with the, the Victory Belt podcast. Live, so lots on on the sandwich there, Coach. But today. It's all about recruiting and the big news that broke yesterday. So excited to to talk about it with you. It, it, it's crazy because the way it came through on my phone and through my news feeds and everything, it came through Julian Lewis decommitted. And then like 30 seconds later, Hassan Longstreet decommits. I'm like, oh, where's he going? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Hassan Longstreet commits to USC. And I've been thinking of a metaphor. It's either Lincoln Riley is lucky but I'm going to be positive, Matt, man. I'm going to go with the shot heard around the world. There we go. This is the SC revolution. We've been begging for local kids. I think Hassan Longstreet is the guy that is going to, not around the world. I shouldn't say around the world. The shot heard in around California. California. Yeah, around exactly. California. Like he's going, maybe this is the signal like, wait, this is a five star quarterback. This is one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. This guy is going to USC. Maybe we should start going to SC. Maybe the local talent is going to stay. And maybe this is something to be a positive. I love the kid. I've seen the kid play in person. I've seen him throw. His throwing motion is really smooth. Yes. It's one of those smooth throwing motions, like the flick of the wrist and it goes 100 miles. like yep. Kind of like Michael vick S, like really smooth kid. Um, I hear he's a great kid. I look at all his pictures, though. He looks so young. He looks like a baby. Like He doesn't have like that grown look to him but i think a year i think a year behind my ava would be good for him um he gets to play at home we're recruiting at home again lincoln riley gets lucky we knew Ju- julian lewis wasn't going to come it's been for months it wasn't if it was when i know i was staying optimistic about it I tr- I, at least i was optimistic you know sometimes i'm not very optimistic but <laughs> uh i think I mean, all we did was just flip the coin over, right? We're not losing any – or the dollar bill. Let's say the dollar bill. We're just flipping the dollar bill over, same dollar bill, same talent. Hopefully we build. We get them to learn. I think this is a really good get. I'm going to say something about Julian Lewis. Not negative, but I'm going to say something about him. Just tell me your opinion and what do you think about getting this gift for Long Street? Coach, this is a home run get, and I think the whole Trojan family collectively – should be rejoicing as they are, as, as you can sort of get a sense of Twitter the last 24 hours. I think these are two elite prospects. To me, given the situation, given the program, given the context, Hassan Longstreet is a much better fit for USC than even Julian Lewis is. And it's for a couple of reasons. Number one, Hassan Longstreet is dual threat in a way that Julian Lewis is not. So that ability to be run and throw is really where Lincoln's secret sauce is. You know, Coach, we had kind of an interesting conversation yesterday about Lincoln calling a great game, right, against Nebraska. And you said, where was this sort of play calling uh, with Miller Moss? And for whatever reason, it wasn't there. Now, was that kind of a strategic error? Was that a tactical error? Was that kind of just a personality error on Lincoln? But for whatever reason, it seems like he's just more in his element as a play caller as a schemer when he has a dual threat quarterback. So number one, Hassan Longstreet is dual threat. Number two coach, and you said it best, he's local. 
the Trojan Wall. Coach, I've, I've coined that term, Trojan Wall, if you recall, uh, last spring. And I said, only when the Trojan Wall is established do we feel like USC is going to be back. And when we say being back, we're talking about circa 2008 type of USC being back. This is a huge first step, Coach, in that direction of being able to bring him back being able to bring the program back. Number three, what I love is Longstreet is buying into the why as to as to the choice of USC and Lincoln Riley. He talked a great deal uh, about the four to five starting quarterbacks that are in the NFL right now under the Lincoln Riley tutelage. And he said, look, that's just too great to pass up. So he understands who he is playing for and I think that coach quarterback relationship coach is so sacred. It's so important to the vitality of a program. Longstreet is not just coming to USC. He's coming for Lincoln Riley. And I think that relationship is absolutely significant. Fourth uh, coach is you talk about the arm talent and it just, you said it, you used the word smooth. I just love the release. You know, the NFL people kind of, judge the parabola right the parabola of when you sort of take the ball back and throw it the longer the wind up the less attractive that is to Mm -hmm. nfl people right and that was tebow's problem right that wind up was so long right that parabola was so wide that was the problem long street's parabola is so tight he can he can generate so much velocity and so much touch um and and just such a beautiful deep ball with such a short parabola on that release It reminds me, you said Michael Vick, coach. I love that comp. It reminds me of Aaron Rodgers, prime Aaron Rodgers, where just with that flick of the wrist, the ball, it just jumps off his arm in a very significant way. And so for all of those reasons, this is a massive day for for USC recruiting. It won't necessarily change the overall ranking because you're losing kind of a five-star quarterback and you're getting a five-star quarterback. But what this does is it really sets the stage foundationally. Now can Longstreet be that super recruiter that we wanted Julian Lewis to be to go get other local guys um, and and bring them to this program. And five, now we have a situation, Maeva and Longstreet. Maeva, we talked in detail, did a lot of good against Nebraska. You saw the big arm. You saw him kind of getting outside of the pocket, but he also did a lot of bad. You saw kind of the erratic decision-making, forcing the throws. That's all part of the process and journey with Maeva. He's going to get two more games and get that body of work. And so now Maeva's probably going to be in full position. But Longstreet said, hey, I'm coming in for that starting job as well. He's going to be nipping on his heels. We could be having a really nice quarterback competition in the spring, depending on how Maeva plays. If Maeva has sort of a Miller Moss-esque holiday bowl moment, it's going to feel like Maeva is going to be the starter with Longstreet kind of nipping at his heels. If these next three games, Coach, and a possible fourth with the bowl game are a little bit more up and down and choppy. This thing could be a wildly competitive quarterback competition in the spring and in a, in a very compelling way. So big day for, for USC, big day for the Trojan family. And, and you almost sort of wonder, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. If you sort of retreated back and said at the beginning, would I rather have Lewis or would I rather have Longstreet? I think most of us would say we'd rather have Longstreet. And so you sort of wonder why we didn't sort of recruit him first to begin with. But he was a little bit of a late bloomer at 6'1 and a half, 195. And now he's the overall 28th best player in the country, fourth best quarterback in the country, second best in the state of California. So a uh, really, really exciting day uh, for, for USC. I, 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 I'm going to bring up two things. I'm looking at the top 25, the top 25 recruits in California. I will say this: Your the other school is on the that has the twenty fifth person and Jaden Hudson, um, a safety. But one, two, three, we're on there three times. Yep. It's not like it's not like in the past where we would have been on there ten times. But I will take three, and they're at legit positions. We got. The number two guy overall, which I'll take. And then we got a linebacker. I'll take a top 25 linebacker. And then we have number 21, a cornerback. Yep. So two out of the three are defensive guys. I'll take that all day. You know I'll take that all day every no day, Madman. And so what I was going to say was and I was going to let you finish. Madman, I think we get better with Longstreet. I think we get better with Longstreet. I think – you kind of mentioned he was a late bloomer. 
I don't think we really recruited him up front. Yep. And then he kind of you kind of watch the play and you see what he's doing with this Corona Centennial team, which plays modern day this this Friday or Saturday, or whatever. And people are saying like it's going to be closer than you think, even though modern day, like I think it kind of happened like, oh, this is why, you know, maybe we should we maybe we are missing on him. Like, and so I think that's why there was never really panic out of SC's camp when Julian Lewis was kind of balking. Yeah, because they were silently in the background, like if we could get a home kid and we could make this home kid really good, we get more home kids. Like that number on the twenty five goes from seven. We get seven of the top twenty five kids in California every year. Now you're talking. Yep. We're now now, now, it's, now you're, yeah. you're getting back right now. You're <laughs> building that Trojan wall. To me, yeah. coach. I want it to be even higher. I want it to be 10. I mean, to me, that's sort of the magic number. You know, that's when you've truly walled off Southern yeah. California. Uh, but it, it's absolutely right. And, and two things I'll add there, Coach. One is a lot of credit needs to go to Luke uh, Heward, the, the yeah, U.S. The quarterback Q-Rabet coach, coach. Yep. who, you know, didn't sort of let go of the rope with Longstreet even when he committed to Texas A&M uh, in April, I believe. And so he kept the conversation warm kept text messaging him, kept the relationship alive, really sort of had a sense that, look, this could be our guy. If anything happens, especially in this day and age with NIL and all of these kids with the transfer portal, if anything happens, this is our guy. And so huge shout out to Luke Heward to be that relentless recruiter that you need for every top program. And number two, Coach, look, we have sort of questioned Lincoln Riley's ability as an overall head coach uh, these three years. Again, how how is he going to sort of coach the trenches? How is he going to sort of run a holistic football program, both on the field, off the field? How much does he care about special teams? How much does he care about defense? All of these things. But this guy's bread and butter, Coach, is quarterback (laughs) development. He not only has a PhD, he has a postdoc. I mean, he is what the academic community would call, you know, a thought leader, the world's foremost authority. In college football quarterback development, that has never been questioned. Um, he's the leader in that particular space. And so he can walk into any room and say, look, you know, I have done, I've got three Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. I got four starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I know how to develop quarterbacks. And I think Longstreet was just enamored by that. Who wouldn't be? And so credit to Lincoln Riley. This is why you bring a Lincoln Riley here. You know, this is what our expectation was um, at way back at the, at the beginning of, of 2022, that this would be the norm, not the exception. So again, Lincoln Riley's name for quarterbacks is absolutely significant. And my hope coach is the domino effect here. Can Longstreet now bring some guys in the trenches with him? You know, because to me, it was a Lewis for Longstreet swap, which we win that trade. We win that trade every time. But to me, you know, the, the two that I'm most concerned about is kind of potentially losing Carde Smith at, at offensive line and then losing Hayden Lowe at defensive line, right? And so can Longstreet be a little bit of that super node now and say to some of these other local kids, hey, you know, Longstreet's going to USC. I want to sort of join him. Let's get this party started again in Southern California. So the, 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 I'm with you, but I will say, I will say it, it's more pressing defensive line wise and it is offensive line yep. wise because Agreed. we are bringing in a bunch of a young offensive linemen so i would be like it's more pressing to bring in the interior on the defense and get depth there and start building there but i i totally agree with you it's like hey like we can't i can't win without defense i need defensive guys right but i mean i think i think this is the first wall that goes up right and we'll just say it's four walls no matter how you put it there's four walls i think this is the first wall that goes up hopefully this wall is set east because everybody has to come from east or either north to come get us so hopefully this is the first wall we put up and this wall is set east we put the second wall up and it's set north and then take care of the rest we actually don't even need four walls we just need two walls on the east and the <laughs> and on the north and, and and it takes care of everything so i this is this scares me though, man, because we get so excited about when Lincoln Riley does things. This is like a toxic relationship. It's like he's buying us flowers after he just beat us. <laughs> no, because you know it, it's it's really exciting because look, everyone who cares very deeply about this university, everyone who cares very deeply about this football program, knows that it's a blue blood. Knows mm-hmm. about the history. 
but sometimes it's nice to get that affirmation, right? You yeah. know, like sometimes when you're in a relationship and, and, you know, one of the people in the relationship said, you know, I just needs like, I need like words of affirmation. Like, are we, are we like good? Are we going in the right direction and all of those things? We can tell each other all we want, the content creator community, the Twitter community, fans, we can kind of self-rationalize our way to say that USC is a blue blood all day long because we care about the program so much. But it's always nice, nice to get that external confirmation that this is still very much a destination, despite the struggles, despite, you know, wherever this season's going to end up, despite last year's eight and five, despite the four and eight before, uh, you know, Lincoln got here with 2021, that people can still see when you put the puzzle pieces together, USC football is still a very deeply attractive place to come to, uh, particularly at the quarterback and the wide receiver position because of Lincoln Riley and everything that USC holds. So that to me, is sort of the galvanizing powerful element here with Longstreet that think about it, coach, you know, you can look at it both ways. Like, my gosh, we invested so much in Julian Lewis. I mean, we thought we had him locked up in August of 2023 coach. I mean, think about that. That's 15 months almost. I mean, 15 months, we thought we had the kid and then he flipped, but look at it the other way with Longstreet. Longstreet was committed to Texas A&M since April. He's been kind of committed to Texas A&M for seven or eight months now, about seven months. And all it took was sort of three weeks with Lincoln Riley and Heward coming to the games, having a conversation, and he flipped right away. You know, so it shows that there's still a lot of shine. There's still a lot of appeal. There's still a lot of cachet. There's still a lot of swagger. There's still a lot of sparkle to, to the USC football program. And I think that's what gets us excited. And, Coach, you know, we're all human. We need it. Um, moving forward into this off season, yeah, and 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 it's a it's a little different for us, right? Because we legit have a vested interest in USC football, totally. right? Like for you, like you financially for four years, you have a vested interest <laughs> in USC football, right? And I was lucky enough to go there for free, but like I legit have blood, sweat, and tears on Howard Jones Field. Well, it's all torn up now, and it probably went somewhere, but still, like. There's a vested interest in there for me. Like it's it's more than just I grew up watching USC football, and there's no knock to those people. There's no knock to them at all. But just when you like legit go there and you want to see like the 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 growth of your school, you want to see your school excel. Is it, that's the thing that's about it. And like sometimes you just have to tell the truth. You're gonna you you have a beautiful daughter, and one day you're gonna have to sit down and tell her the truth, even though she's not going to hear it. I'm gonna have to sit down and tell my kids the truth, even though they not want to. You totally. tell me the truth all the time, even though I don't want to hear it. But there's it's not that I dislike it or anything like that. You're looking out for my best interest. So that's all it is. Like, but this right here, you're right. It's 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 like affirmation. It's legit. The mom coming to hug you, like here. Like, I still love you. You're still my child. Like, it, it's so good to see her. I wish Ryan was here because uh, there was another big time recruit there, right? I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defensive lineman. The defensive lineman. Yeah, the three star Jacobson. Yep, exactly. That Cass Jacobson guy? Yep, exactly. Yeah, so. And he, gotta, you know, he's a really interesting prospect coach because he's a late bloomer. You know, he was um, under uh, recruited, under heralded, and then he gained 90 pounds in the offseason. And then all oh, of a sudden yeah. became you know, a very noticeable kind of defensive line prospect. So I still think he's going to be a little bit of a project that we're going to have to sort of mold and shape. But my God, who better than, than Eric Henderson to be able to do that? So very exciting on a number of fronts here for, for the Trojans. This is going to be kind of a frenetic next couple of weeks, Coach, because we got the, the two rivalry games on the field, and now we're getting closer and closer to signing day off the field. So should be a fun next couple of weeks for us, and let's see where this thing shakes out. We're legit like a month out now, so we yeah, just have now, to hold now, on now for it. Now it gets real. Now it <laughs> yeah, gets real. Yeah, just, Absolutely. And then, and then hopefully we get some more flits, and then hopefully uh, – I'm not going to say hopefully for that one. The, we'll bring the victory bell back from his vacation home into his rightful ownership, so everything will be that good. That was a very clever analogy you gave yesterday, Coach. You know, the home and the vacation home. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting very excited about – uh, our show tomorrow, you know, and, uh, you know, with, with Will and you and, and uh, with myself and, you know, yeah. bringing, bringing the worlds together. It should be a really fun one. Real quick. Let's comment on something real quick. I know you, I know we, we got to run. This is supposed to be sure. a quick show. Real quick. Article came out on LAFB. Bear Alexander tries to go back to Georgia and or made it seem like he was visiting Georgia to confirm that he was in Georgia. 
how do you feel about this whole Bear Alexander thing now? Because when I read that, when I read that article, I had a difference of opinion. I want to get your opinion on it first. I'll tell you mine. Yeah, coach, I, I felt very sad, actually. You know, yeah. at, at the end of the day, you know, you want to see all of these kids succeed. You know, these are, you know, coach, you're in your 30s. I just turned 40 this year. You know, these are 18 to 22 year old kids. You know, we've lived life and, you know, there's still hopefully a lot more life for both of us. But, you know, we, we've had our ups and downs and our our successes and our failures. At the end of the day, you know, you want to see all of these 18 to 22 year old kids succeed. And, and in an ideal world, you would want them to succeed in the Cardinal and gold of USC, but you just want them to succeed overall. These are young people. This is our future. Uh, football is something that's so powerful in terms of connecting so many different people um, at a time that I think our world needs it the most. And so, you know, having said all of that, I just felt sad. Bear just seems very confused, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, he went from Georgia and then, you know, came to SC and then everything was fine and then threatened to leave and then got the bag and then stayed and then left again, wanted to go back to Georgia I just it made me very sad. I just hope that he is getting the right guidance moving forward. I know we had talked about that a lot in the offseason. And I just hope he's he's getting the right voices and the right wisdom um, right now because he's he's very talented and there's still a, a multiple years of eligibility left in his career. And so I just hope he can kind of maximize his potential, live out his dreams and get to the NFL. But every time that you're sort of waffling back and forth, um, you know, it just shows kind of a lack of clear clarity. There's an insecurity, and I just wonder if he's getting the right guidance. So more than anything else, Coach, forget about USC's prospects or being a fan or being an analyst. Just as a human being, um, I felt sad, and I'm worried for him, and I, I just wish him the best. That that So when I read that, I, when I read that on my way home, the first thing I thought was like, I feel so bad for this kid because this kid yeah. is so lost. Like, yeah, it, it, exactly. it, and like you said, it, it's past football now because now I think it's to the point to where, unfortunately, I don't think anybody really wants him. And the school that's going to take him is going to be a sign of desperation because they really need a guy and they can use yeah. the talent. But it's just like you have so much potential and now you're just you're just out in the weeds with no help and nowhere to go. And I just I feel so bad for the kid at this point. It's not even like you made your bed and laying it because. You really didn't make your bed. You was forced to go get in that bed, and then you had to get out and go get in another bed. And, and I wish nothing but the best for him, and I hope everything works out and, and hope all his talent just comes to fruition. He becomes a, just a stellar athlete wherever he goes. But at this point, it's like this is a perfect example of the downfall of the transfer portal. Yeah. This is a perfect example of the downfall of NIL, and if anything – I don't think SC is big enough right now for it to be a big deal. But if this happened maybe at Texas right now or Alabama or something like that, I think it will start ringing the alarm. Like, we need to start to put some control on this. Totally. But unfortunately, like, it's, they're just not big enough. and they're, they're not making enough media noise for them to be like, hey, like, this isn't right. Like, at the end of the day, it's about the kids, and we need to do something to protect these kids. And right now, Bears is out there unprotected, and it, it's not good for him. So, like, I, and, and so we're on the same feeling. When I read, that's exactly what I and yeah, I it's just hard for him to coach. Forward. And yeah. you know, when you've got choice, it's like anything in life. You know, you go to the grocery store, and you got forty different types of cereal on on the aisle, and you know you're overwhelmed. Or you go on a dating app, and you know it's just swiping, <laughs> swiping, swiping. I mean, it's just all choice overload, right? And and that's kind of what the transfer portal is, where you can always sort of convince yourself or get convinced of sort of a better situation and and you're still 18 to 22 at the end of the day you're still young you're you're growing you haven't sort of developed fully as an adult yet you know emotionally yeah. uh, psychologically you know just from a security perspective and so um you know just hope that he's you know this allows him to maybe take a step back and I, the one thing i'll say is i think if he can demonstrate a maturity of how he has learned from this if he has a really good answer and some inflect you know reflection on how he's learned from this there's too much talent there coach for a school not to take a chance and an opportunity and so i just we're, we're all we're all hoping that that he succeeds and you know coach it sort of goes back to even the high school right i mean he he, he hopped a lot of different high yeah. schools to kind of get here and so there's sort of a pattern here and so Hopefully he's just sort of surrounding himself with the right people. He's getting the right guidance and the, the right love and um, just wishing him nothing but the best. And we're all rooting for him. Yeah. At this point, we're rooting for him. And, and that's, you're right. We just hope everything pops out and, and ends up being good for him. Uh, yeah. Quick episode. We're in and out uh, tomorrow. 
tomorrow. We'll be live. We're crossing over. We're going to the crossing got, over, man. Once everyone's, a year. Everyone's going to be pissed off at me no matter what, you know, because <laughs> well, yeah. my two worlds collide tomorrow. So I can't wait for the fan engagement. Will's going to be a hero, but I'm going to be the court jester. And so I'm, I'm ready for it, coach. Now nah, they, they hate me right now because <laughs> I was, I, I told the truth and never did anybody want to hear the truth. So they hate me right now, but I, I, you know what? I could live with it at the end of the day. I could live with it. So, but it's all right. I, I can't wait to see the fan engagement between Bruin fans and UCLA fans. It's just we'll be live tomorrow. Uh, what time did we say again? I think it's going to be. Uh, is it I mean, is it seven o'clock or eight o'clock? I think I think we're, we're still it. sort of solidifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So seven. We'll we'll tweet it out. We'll get totally. the tweet out. Get to to you guys, but. It's going to be big victory bell week. The bell finally gets to come home, comes off vacation in West LA. And we goes to South Central where it belongs. It's nice, <laughs> warm, and cozy and never feels safe. Bad man, I appreciate you. Fans, I appreciate all you guys. You guys, this is the Bet on My Salute Detroit podcast. You guys know how it goes. Live free. Hold right on.